Welcome to PLZ's Football Podcast. I'm Peter Martin. Delighted to say, as ever, Alan Ruff and Tam Cowan are with me. And our special guest today is none other than former Hibs, Celtic, Borussia Dortmund. Let's not forget them, Barton. Uh, and of course, Scotland. Murdo McLeod is here with us. We've got lots to talk about, of course, the traditions between Scotland and Germany for Murdo. Um, we're asking a, a vital question, which you might want to participate in. Uh, which footballer would you love to date? if you were a woman and with the uh, calibre of guests that we've got here with Ruffy and Murdo and World Cup tales are never too far away and of course uh, some of the roommates that they shared uh, on their trips across Europe and across the world uh, we'll get a few of them as well Tam I don't think we'll be in any um, I don't think we'll be in any great tales about roommates unless you're going to tell me different No I'm just uh, thrilled to be here in 1974 do you think it's only women that can date men then Peter yes <laughs> Two sisters. <laughs> no, I'm just talk- shocking. I'm talking shocking, about it from a, I'm talking about it from a football perspective of men. Since there are two guys here that we're going to be debating it with. Anyway, get your thinking cap on. Anyway, uh, Murdo on this, and and Ruffy, you're got obviously going to tell a few uh, World Cup tales, but you, you've obviously edited them down because we've, <laughs> we've had a long hard chat with you. Yeah, we certainly have. I, I don't know which one do you want to start with. You just <laughs> the early yeah, one, the World, World Cups. Cup. Oh, yeah. you, you, he's been at <laughs> that many. Well, the great thing about it, and this is why it's great having you in, Murdo, is 1990s fantastic because uh, me, Davy Moyes, Kenny Moyes' brother, yep. uh, and another mate of ours called Neil, we all get in an old bashed up Audi. Um, I mean, honestly, it was like the worst you could ever think of, and we headed down south of France. Up to Italy, Genoa, watching you play in the, I think, did, did they call it the Luigi Ferrari Stadium? Uh, the Genoa Stadium? And we watched you play in the World Cup there, it was great. Yeah, that was smashing, it was great to see so many Scottish fans there. I, I, I was on the bench for the first game and then the second game, it was the Sweden game. Yeah. Fantastic atmosphere, one of the best atmospheres I've ever played in front of, because the Scottish fans and the Swedish fans were together and... No, no, no problems, no fighting or anything, Tom. And it was just a, a, a fantastic night for us to go in and beat them 2 1. Yeah, absolutely. And Rod Stewart was there at that game. Uh, the reason I know that is because when we were leaving the stadium, he got into the limousine and just whisked away out of the stadium after it, uh, celebrating the victory. <laughs> and probably you and your mates hobnobbed with them afterwards, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, I don't think we went because yeah. I think did Rod not have a go at the team for losing the first game? Yeah. And then when they. I think he asked us to go to the party after the second game. All oh, right. And I think the experienced international <laughs> older boys, I think, turned them down. Told so to was, go and take a flying. So I think we ended up just going, made our own way, different ways, because I, I remember that that night, uh, or the build up to the game, sorry. And it was it was a kind of quiet night, so you couldn't do what you wanted. And a couple of us went out the front door of the hotel and went left. So we were away and we ended up in a wee village and in the town square and there was a game on live. So we sat down, had a couple of beers watching the game. Yeah. And then we got back the time we got back to the hotel that there was everything was going on. Scotland players getting sent home and all that kind of thing and you no know, they'd been out partying too much and ended up having to go back home and pictures were taken in newspapers. I think the usual time it was the a boy with his wife and then the football player, but they cut the boy out, so it was just the boy with a... Yeah, is this 1990? Yeah. I can't remember that, can you? No, I can't remember Well, you know they are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that right? Aye. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. no, the only thing, my abiding memory of that whole um, tournament, I mean, it was fantastic. We had tickets for so many games and we had a, we had a right good time. I mean, followed Scotland everywhere. But the one abiding memory is I remember um, Moisey standing on the left hand side of me in the Turin Stadium. And it was nil nil, Tom. And you've been there a million times before. And he's looking, he's going, no, no, Brazil, this is this is good. Mm. And I never forget it. I turned around, turned around to Davy Moyes and I went, it's Scotland, calm your jets, and sure as fate. Now, who's to blame? Because Jim Leighton spills it. But mm-hmm. was Big Eck not, at, was Big Eck not at, at fault as well? Did he not Did he not do something that allowed Brazil to score? Because we lost one nothing. Can you I remember? Think, I remember that. It's a horrible, the, the, greasy, slippery I, 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 I think. I think what happened, though, with the goalkeeper, he's went down 
and he's pulled it in the way. Instead of maybe pushing it out the way, yeah. he's pulled it across him and it's went the wrong side of him. Yep. And then the Brazilian boys nicked in and put the ball into the net. But I remember for the anniversary, 25th or whatever it was, Jim Layton was on the radio and he was talking about it and he blamed everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> So it was, oh, he it told was me his right contact lens had fell out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I mean, and honestly, I mean, I. Leighton's <laughs> inextricably linked with you, Ruffy. It's incredible how that whole uh, situation came about. I always think it's, this, you know, everybody talks about how sad it is, and it is the saddest night in Scottish football history. We lost Jock Steen. But I think the, the, the most amazing thing is, the, the last words that Jock Steen ever said to you, Ruffy, yeah. I just think they're priceless. Well, it was, it was so light, light-hearted with that because uh, we were out on the park at half-time and as soon as we, I was on the bench and we went out onto the park, we went to get into the goals with wee David Speedy and the boy said, no, you can't go in the goals. Uh, the Welsh Dragoon Guards, the band, is going to be going up and down the park. So you can't go in the goals. So wee David Speedy said, well, I'll go to the other side of the park and you go to this side. So the Welsh Dragoon guards were walking up and down the park and all we were doing was firing balls at their hats. No, <laughs> <laughs> trying to know their hats. <laughs> See, hats we get off that, I mean, the tension was unbelievable, but no one in the park. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, Brian Scott, came out and he went, Ruffy, 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 you've got to come in. I says, what is it? He says, you have to come on, you're coming on the second half. And I went, well, what's the story? Oh, I'll tell you when you get in. And being a football player, you go... That's a wind up. That's our <laughs> biggest wind I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to, you know, obviously be the, the butt of the jokes. And, uh, and, he, and then he got serious. He got really serious. He said, No, you better come in. All hell's broke loose in that, that dressing room. So, of course, when I get in, the time I get in, all the players were coming out. And, uh, and I was just put my jersey on. Everybody had left the dressing room. And it was just me and Jock were standing there, and he, and he said these immortal words to yeah. me. I uh, can't you can swear. No, you can tell us. I mean, uh, change, I was wait- change the word he said for cabbage <laughs> and tell us what he said. <laughs> right, I mean, no, no, it's fine. It's a podcast. I mean, I think uh, you can say. No, I, as I was going out the dress room, I thought he was going to say, Hey, you. I went, I thought he was going to say, Look, all the best. Look. Hope everything goes right for you. And he said, Just, just get out there, you fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? It's a great line, but those, those were genuinely the last words yeah. that Jock Steen ever me, said yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's magnificent. It's, 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 it's great. Absolutely brilliant. Were you a, were you a Scotland fanatic? Uh, no, I was a fanatic uh, for about 1998 when the BBC paid for us to go to the World <laughs> Cup. <laughs> That was the worst, the first World Cup I ever went to, and I'll tell you, it was absolutely fantastic, because all kidding aside, we'd only been doing um, off the ball for a couple of years by that point, and a, and a World Cup popped up, I mean, we'd basically only been doing it for months, and then Euro 96 came along, That's and right. we were doing there for two and a half weeks, right. and uh, in the nice hotels, and going to the games, doing shows every night, and I thought, wow, this is amazing, the World Cup comes round two years later, right boys, he's going out to France for three weeks, we thought, oh, and I thought, that's great, we get this every two years now <laughs> and we've, we've no done anything <laughs> since you know but my, my lasting memories of the 98 World Cup oh the for a start I was seriously ill at the 98 World Cup I get sunstroke when we were out there the first few days we were in Paris it must <laughs> you have can been, remember what went oh, on then <laughs> I'll tell you it must have been about 115 degrees in Paris and I was Mr. Motherwell abroad <laughs> uh, stoting about the centre of Paris with not a bit of sun cream on or anything and the next morning I woke up and it was that way if you've ever had sunstroke you're roasting one minute freezing the next roasting one minute freezing the next ended up I thought I'm not going to be able to do any shows today we somehow got a doctor mm-hmm. who didn't speak a word of English I get the big jag right up the backside, right <laughs> and when we got him to fill in our producer got me to fill in a week kind of insurance for him what he'd put was visit doctor right but he'd abbreviated that and in the box all oh, it said was VD so that <laughs> So the reason, the reason for me calling out a doctor and then having to put this claim for him <laughs> into the BBC, all it said was VD. So I thought, what am I going to do? So what I did quite cunningly, I put Chick Young's name at the top it and it sailed through it. <laughs> brilliant, ah, they were brilliant. used to that. They were used to that. I must say as well, the other we, uh, if you can go for physical health to what I'm sure must have been a mental health issue, the other memorable moment that I'll never ever ever forget we were in I think this was in Bordeaux who did we play in Bordeaux was it Norway was that the 
Maybe the third yes, game. Yes, Craig Burley that scored. That was a one-one game. We'd moved on to Bordeaux and a wee kind of a shopping centre, but there was loads of Scotland fans had taken over it. There was bars and restaurants and everything, and just. To the outskirts of this wee shopping area, there was like a wee swing park, a wee French style swing park, and uh, I'll never forget this. <laughs> listen, he's, no, 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 listen, oh, this is he's, great. Got, he's got VD, I'll and never so get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> you should have moved away when you heard that VD, no, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyhow, there was a, a honestly, it was like a scene from like a French film or something. There's just absolutely beautiful young French mother, absolutely very very pretty, and she's got the wee absolutely beautiful daughter there who's all bows and curls and everything, and a, just a perfect happy family picture. The mother in this wee swing part bit is trying to get her daughter to have a shot on the shoot, right? Yeah. But the wee lass is absolutely petrified, right? And the tartan army being the Tartan Army who are normally picking up litter or try to find a cure for cancer or something, you know. The Tartan Army guys thought, we can we can help out here, you know. So this big, gi- I can still see him, this big, giant, 19 stone Tartan Army guy with the whiskers and the cowl and everything, he's, he decides he'll show the wee lassie how it's done. So, as the mother and the wee lassie, absolutely angelic, are stood at the bottom of the chute, looking up the chute, this big guy, the whole Whole thing's rocking, right? He's walking up the ladder but at the back of the chute to try and get up the top. He gets up to the top and he sits down, right? And they're doing at the bottom of the chute, looking up, waiting for him to slide down. He tries, he's stuck a wee bit, but he throws himself off. And as he starts coming down the chute, though, the kill gets caught, right? And all it comes down to this woman and her wee <laughs> Are these like genitals, like a hairy hippopotamus <laughs> coming at about 40 mile an hour? And as I say, I think that wee lassie was immediately put into a, a home uh, for the mentally disadvantaged because what a fright she must have got. Yeah. But it was hilarious, it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know Great what? trap. After those two stories, I think you can do the granny story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, I mean, the other thing I was going to say to you, Murdo, and he, he always harps on about World Cups like that, do, do you get to savour it, do you, or are you just so focused on the games, do you get, it, you know, you're in there with your roommates, yeah. the one thing that's my abiding memory of him was, he, he said to me, 78 was a disaster, because the hotel wasn't even a one-star hotel, the pool didn't have any water in it, there was nothing to do, there's no internet, there's absolutely nowhere to go, there's barbed wire fence, and then there's, um, you know, people outside, the soldiers are outside with guns, Mm. so, you know, no wonder, no wonder we had a nightmare, but what was it like No, I think we we get really well looked after, Uh, we were taken away a couple of times, I think we were not in a ski lift at some point as well, but as Alan touched on, no, the gun, the guys with the guns were always beside you. It was, it was an amazing amount of people walking about with books, walking side by side. And you're thinking, what's in the book? And they'd open the book and the gun was inside it. Oh. No, so the, we get well looked after. But the whole time, because the most important thing and the best thing was just in the training. You know, every, every day you were in training, you're, you're playing for your country. And that was, that was, that's the highlight of the whole thing. Yeah. Peter, to be there, to be part of it and just going and join the... The, the games. Did you have anything like Mur- like Ruffy? Because his dad followed him everywhere, so he he would come into the dressing room and say, "Right, g- give me the g- yeah, give me the ticket, give me the ticket that. for my pals." <laughs> Jeez, you that. think I'm Your dad, tell like, My dad, my dad, about with Gordon McQueen's dad, and they were just rough diamonds, you know. And in the old Hamden, there was a wee window where you used to leave your tickets for your dad. Um, we were playing Holland uh, at Hamden, and I'd left the tickets, and he used to meet up Gordon McQueen's dad, and this guy came in. And he went, eh, Ruffy, Ruffy, your dad's at the front door. Can he find the tickets? Where have you put them? I says, I left them at the front door. And he says, well, he can't get them. I says, well, oh, I can't be tough an hour. I just <laughs> can't, go, I can't be bothered. <laughs> My tickets are there. Trust me. So Jock Steen's in, a, in the middle of the dressing room and he's, he's going through in the defence in the midfield. <laughs> and my dad comes in the dressing room and he's tarting Tommy and that one. I can't even find any tickets. <laughs> 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 Are you bothered me? Oh, that, no? The tickets? No, I was all right, all right with the the, the tickets because it was the, the family was over there. Yeah, no, you were at the top of your game then, weren't you? What would you have been? Twenty nine? Yeah, nineteen so. ninety. So you were playing for Dortmund then, yeah, weren't Dortmund. you? Dortmund. So we came down, obviously back to Scotland, but the family came down from Germany, straight from Germany down there, and what we were going to do is. 
I was going to say, stay there for a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're hoping it was going to be a month. Yeah. But uh, we ju- we stayed on for a, about another 10 days yeah. after, and, after playing it. And I mentioned you were playing for Dortmund. It, you'll need to hold his mic, Ruffy, because I want Tam to see this Dortmund shirt that um, oh, Murdo okay. brought along. Now, if you're uh, if you're listening to it in the podcast, you can actually go to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and you'll see the podcast as well to see, look at how big, feel it, Tam, and look at how big it is. Look. Aye, aye, I mean, aye. it's absolutely incredibly huge. I mean, did they, was was everybody's um, yeah. top, but were they all baggy? They were all the same size. Aye. And obviously, the smaller guys, it was just, they get blown away in the wind. Yeah. You no, know, they're running about with this thing around it just... But you're tucking it in and tucking it in and pulling it round. Yeah. But just massive. Yeah. Even even today, I tried it on the other night, Tom, and I'm thinking, how could we have... What size was I when I was playing? Yeah. Because it was... It felt it was all right. Did you feel as if you were, um, you know... Did you have an inferiority complex? Or when you joined Dortmund, did you think, no, pff, listen, I've played for Celtic, I'm good enough to be here. What was your mindset? Just what you said. Yeah, I. <laughs> I think when you're you're going to another club after after Celtic, and I, I was there for nine years, so it's it was fantastic time at Celtic, and achieved quite a lot. Scottish internationals going to a German football club, and you always I always felt kind of new parts of German football because we used to every summer go out to Germany for the pre season games, and it was all they were always tough games, so I always thought it was going to be a a tough venture out here, even playing against the kind of lower league teams in Germany. They were good quality, so going to play with the, one of the top ones was fantastic. Yeah, who did you room with there? Uh, it changed quite a lot. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the boys, I was going to say, they wanted to sleep with me, but <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. We had Johnny Russell on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> who actually mentioned the fact that he won the Dundee United won the Scottish Cup and they all went out, or, you know, for a few large ones. Uh-huh. And he woke up in the morning <laughs> and he looked round and Danny Swanson was in the bed <laughs> looking. And he looked round and Danny Swanson's in the bed next to him with his eyes open looking at him. <laughs> I didn't even have that. I lo- I lo- a lot of the boys used to wa- want to come in uh, room with me. Yeah. Because they Why? wanted to practice their English. All oh, right. So it was it was great for me having a wee chat with them, and then you could ask them any questions about what was going on at the club and all this kind of thing. So it was it was perfect because most of the guys could speak English, but there's two or three of them couldn't, so they never came near me. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you feel as if you did you hit the ground running? I mean, were you absolutely on top of your game? Did they take to you right away? I did. They did. Yeah. I. The the, mo- the most important thing was the supporters took to me. Yeah. No, they always sung my name, Tam, and it was fantastic going on to the football pitch. But your teammates there, in training, the things I used to do in training, I used to whack a few of them and just let them know this is what football's about, yeah. getting about people. And it kind of raised, a lot of them always said that it kind of raised their game because they... Because I worked so hard at training. Yeah. They always And thought, when you whacked them, did they think, well, I mean, you're giving them a wee bit of what Scottish football's all about. Did well, they, ever, did they, they always think about knew fighting? The amount of times and the, the amount of players in Germany who hated playing against Scottish sides, English sides, British sides, a, anyone from the, here, they, 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 they're always terrified. They always felt we were too physical for them. They always said about technical ability was not from Britain, but their, their attitude and the, the way they come into ch- challenges. Yeah. And a lot of times now, they, they, no, they, they hated playing against us. That's interesting. I mean, uh, Tam, uh, have you been in the Westfalen? I mean, it's a fantastic stadium. No, I haven't been there. No. Yeah. What's no. your favourite stadium? My favourite stadium, uh, I must say, actually, um, Wembley. Yeah. When I went to Wembley. The old Wembley uh, or the new the, one? The old uh, the Euro 96, the Gaza goal, yeah. putting it out of Colin Hendry seed and then pass Gorham. Uh, when I went there, I must admit, you know, you, 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 you know it's, we are grudging. Uh, kind of tone in your voice that you, you you talk up anything that's English, but I must say that Wembley I genuinely get goosebumps uh, walking up towards it that day and then going into the the stadium and uh, and then when we got the goal, of course, you're thinking, wow, we're going to get a result here. My first ever trip to Wembley Stadium, you know, yeah. it was absolutely magnificent. And you know what rem- <clears throat> reminds me of um, what I think about when I think of Euro '96 again, amazingly, um, <clears throat> Davy. Uh, Moyes' manager, I think Shrewsbury at this time. Mm-hmm. So he's managed um, his brother Kenny's 
who's an agent, mm-hmm. managed to get his tickets from the Azerbaijan FA. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as you know, you think to yourself, who cares? Yeah. But the Azerbaijani FA tickets were in the England end. Oh. So me, Neely, Kenny, uh, Davey, I think, had actually managed to get tickets in the main stand, so he'd obviously juked us. <laughs> so we're in the England end when Gaza scores oh. and it was an absolute nightmare and the one thing I remember about that because obviously Davy lived in Preston we were able to obviously you know before we were going down there Ruffy we were able to actually go to Preston have you ever been to Preston Ruffy? No, no, I don't no. think I have. No. <clears throat> Fabulous nightlife, mental, right? <laughs> but but when we <laughs> we've sampled the nightclubs <laughs> and I, and, I, and I've chatted this, I've chatted this girl up for about two hours and we're doing a nightclub, right? <laughs> She's, I, I'm not, and I'm not winding you up because you're here. She's German, right? So <laughs> and she can speak English. And I've chatted her up for two hours and I've given her some of my best lines, Ruffy. And I'm thinking, absolutely magnificent. And at the end of it. You know Davy's brother, Kenny? Yes. He's six yes. foot two, blonde. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a German. <laughs> so I've chatted her up for two hours. She's laughed heartily and then got off with him. <laughs> you get the elbow. <laughs> just get, I just get the heave. Maybe, maybe she thought you were uh, Doberman from Sergeant Milko. <laughs> and, and she'd been a big fan of that show because they show that globally. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'd She's like, this, uh, this tub might get me introduced to Phil Silvers. <laughs> <Tub. laughs> By the way, it's 1996. I'm thin. Do you know the thing about it, though? This is amazing, by the way. We were all down there at Wembley for the England oh. game, and me, Kenny, and a guy called Eric McAleer got a photograph with you outside Wembley. Oh, Do you not remember it? Right. Do you remember I sent you the photograph of me, you, and the, the, my mate? Oh, aye. Uh-huh. And we aye. got a photograph. That was 1996. That was 1996. And we were there, aye. and you, and, and we said, can we have a photograph with you? I was <laughs> working at Radio 4, so you just obviously thought, you're, you're some, Who's that? You're some, <laughs> Egypt, Who's that? you're some Egypt from a small radio station. Honestly, That's it's amazing. Right, remember you get your photograph aye, taken with us outside. It was fantastic down there, though. Great. The atmosphere. Oh, you, oh, you're, you're saying about it. It was brilliant. See, when you, you, you talk about Hamden, you know, it's, so, it's too far away behind the goals. Wembley was the same, but because it was Wembley, because when you're a wee boy and you watch Wembley in the, in the cup finals and the Scotland England games down there, and you always feel, oh, fantastic! You want to play at Wembley, yeah? You know, it's fantastic. And my my, my first time going down to Wembley, Alan, you've been a, a lot more than I've been down there. Eight, but eight. is that all? <laughs> <laughs> Any clean sheets? <laughs> oh, what? Hey, I've got a record, by the way. Have you? Uh, what is it? Uh, the only goalkeeper after the war. It's the two wins at Wembley. Scottish goalkeeper. Oh. Back to my record. What were the scores? Was that the one Robert scored one nothing? 2-1. Two two one one the Kenny threw the legs. Aye, we threw. Aye, we Lou McCarry and it bounced in a bit. 70. Yeah. Uh, 77. No, 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 no. 2-1 no. uh, was Kenny 77. threw the legs at Ray Clemens. Oh, and that was at Hamden. Aye. Oh, no, that, that was 76. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's three wins in a row against him then. No, it's not a bad Very record, Ruffy. But Isn't Murdo's it? right, walking out at Wembley. Could, the old Wembley, you had to go down behind the goal. Aye, and that walk. Uh, and you special. walked up this t- tunnel that was yeah. steps going up, and then you come out. And they told us then that there was no Scottish supporters getting tickets for that game. <laughs> but see, when you get up the top, <laughs> <laughs> you saw was the yellow flags. And it, it was, I, I would be lucky. I would say they'd be lucky if there was 10,000 English supporters at that game. Is that right? Uh, but I, I've got. For, I, I keep threatening to bring you in to show. I was at a that pho- game. A photographer Aye, sent me the real life still photos that he took, black and white, on the clicker cameras. Yeah, Aye. and he's got all the thing, man. I've I've got them, and I'll bring them in. It is phenomenal. You see the the, the flags, the Scottish flags that are there. Yeah, Everybody's a good team, Ruffy. Oh, a great team. You know, Brilliant team. I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah. you, you, you think about it. I mean, we we always uh, look back in some of the teams that we had, e- even the nineteen ninety side. Murdo, mm. I mean, he played with some absolutely world class players. Yeah. But the nineteen ninety side had guys that were top drawer as well. Yeah, you you look through your squad and you're thinking, this team, if we play, we'll beat good teams. Yeah, and we we're just inconsistent. Ty- typical Scotland going away, losing your first game. And then you were up against how did, it. How, how could you not? How could you not win games? I remember the Costa Rica game, and I'm thinking, how can we not beat anybody? How can we not beat Costa Rica? We, you know, you said you missed the first game, but there was Stuart McCall, Alex McLeish was still in that side. Yes. Mo, Mo Johnson, oh, Mal Pass, Mo it was John. all good Paul players. McStay. Paul McStay, Paul McStay, yep. It's unbelievable, wasn't it? We spill on as well in '98, and we'd, it was all household names as well for us to get gubbed 
three nil by Costa Rica. Right now, that was the Morocco. last game, wasn't it? Morocco, 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 Morocco sorry, yeah. Morocco. And uh, did Costa Rica not beat us previous to that? No, as well? that was that was that was ninety. That, that was that ninety, was 90 right? yes. Well, with Morocco, as if when you thought it couldn't get bad enough that night when we were out there. Um, I thought, right, we're going to win this one. Uh, we can maybe dress up a wee bit for the occasion. <laughs> and because we were playing Morocco, what I'd taken uh, with me was one of the three quarter length tartan wee willy winky night guns, you know, the things. <laughs> and that was actually a wee bit quite like the Moroccan national dress, Aye. you know. And I thought, well, that'll be a good laugh wearing that to the game, right? <laughs> and it was a good laugh wearing it to the Aye. game. But it wasn't a good laugh wearing it after the game, you'd been fucked 3 0. <laughs> 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 Felt like a complete daddy, you know. Why, why are these two games never ever brought up in the same vein as Iran and That's Peru? That's a good shout. Aye. 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 Nobody well, ever, nobody honestly, ever talks no, about them. You take it as a compliment <laughs> because when you day look, it's like gradually as you move on, and I don't think, and they harm to Bertie Votes, but it was kind of when it tipped into the Bertie Votes era and it seemed that caps were giving out like smarties yeah. when you started maybe no knowing the guys that were in the team, right? Yeah. But when you look back, it's a compliment to, to your team that it was such a shock. No, were <laughs> mega stars Tom. in the Scotland team in 78. Tom, the reason why you're looked upon with such disdain is you managed to uh, create all sorts of havoc going there. The bonus mm. row came out in the papers. Willie Johnson gets yeah. sent home with the, the you know the tablets that he'd taken. So the whole thing kind of a escalated yeah. into a farce. And the story but, but again, and, and that that's when though <clears throat> so many Scottish people are sitting in their house just glued to the television, yeah. watching this magnificent football team away from home. Or there's only three there's channels. So, some of some of the results that they've achieved in all the beating the best in the world and then losing to the minnows. Yeah. And that, that was that was why it was a talking point. Yeah, absolutely. Listen uh, Ruffy, here's a good here's a good question. Uh, obviously, you know, Tam pointed it out and rightly so. <laughs> if you were if you were a woman <laughs> who <laughs> wanted to do <laughs> Who wanted to date? No, no. Who wanted to date? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> He's managed to keep the same hairstyle for all this time. If you were a woman, um, which footballer would you like to date? Uh, I mean, it'd be probably it'd probably be who'd been that who'd been a kind be, and caring guy. I you think I'd probably, I'd, I'd, I'd probably Paolo Maldini. Yeah, well, Paolo Maldini. Shout. But Why? I wouldn't have to be a woman to fancy him. Tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Paulo Maldini. Okay. Oh, he had a bit yeah. of class, didn't he? He looked yeah, like a yeah, film yeah. star. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, it's funny you saying that because that's the one thing that, I mean, my wife would she, very rarely would she turn around and go, oh, there's, that footballer looks nice. And that's the one guy she turned around and she went, oh, he's all right. Paulo right? Maldini, yeah. And I just... So you, gave, you don't gave, like him anymore gave the coach there. And can I just point out to you, in 1996, I think I was 12 and a half stone. <laughs> 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 and I was playing, I was playing no bad football, so <laughs> calm your jets. Now, Murdo. <sighs> I've never ever thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have been a gentleman? Who, like when, who, when you were at Doos, let's say, with Celtic or in Germany, who was the guy that he was oh, absolutely full of charm He's, whenever somebody I, came I know to the dinner table? Or, who? Me. You <laughs> always polite, well brought up. Aye, yeah. I think so. Yeah, right. but is there a footballer you thought, oh, right, good looking guy? There's a lot of guys. Not always the good looking ones is the what the, the girls want to see. Yeah, they want they want somebody that's got a nice personality, a wee bit of fun like yourself, yep. Tom, and yeah. an um, astounding champer. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, who was no, was a big German superstar. Who? I, I think it was before your time. What was his name? Horst Rubisch. The, <laughs> no, he played in the German team. Uh, Overath. Wolfgang. Wolfgang Overath. Yeah. He thought he was a film star. Wolfgang Overath. Was he? Was he no he had a hairstyle like no, Fozzie Bear? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you think the wrong one. No, no. Oh, no. Maybe, maybe France. He was. Oh, France. He was a big smoothie. Ah, he mm -hmm. was. No. Remember, he came for the the Scotland game. Was it Kenny's game? Yes, he's hundred second. Big leather, long leather, leather coat. 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 Yep. They still yeah. talk about it in Germany. Uh, do they? Aye, uh, they do. Was um, that Kenny's testimonial night? I think it was. Yeah. Aye. Uh, so you kind of came up with one. Have you thought of one that you thought? Mm, he's well, on. there you are. Yeah. France. France Beckenbauer. Yeah. Right, Tom. Yeah. Um, I think the Swardy I'll, 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 Let's put it in Motherwell terms Right About right. who's been uh, Very No when I think about <laughs> See that, if you name a Motherwell player No I'm just <laughs> thinking that When you go to the nights Of play of the year night who, who the one is That the, the, the females Are always absolutely fascinated But it'd be Keith Lasley 
the house, oh, yeah. the housewife's oh, yeah. favourite, as he's known, uh, particularly now, and he's starting to get the kind of the salt and pepper hair. Uh, he's still got the lovely eyes, a nice smile, and all that. And all the women, honestly, with any of the dudes that have done it, first part, the minute Keith walks in the room, all the female eyes all go in one place and yeah. one place only. Well, it's funny you say that because we <laughs> we used to have him on regularly in the show, Ruffy, yep. and the. Uh, you, <laughs> did, going, you, did you dump him then? No, no, no. What, what actually happens This is the problem And you might know a player like it uh, Murdo Keith is a brilliant lad Great ambassador for Murdo uh -huh. But when he came We always invited him to our table at the PFA When he gets a drink in him <laughs> he thinks he's John Travolta So he starts oh, doing all that mad dancing oh, And then he just becomes a pest <laughs> 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 And then Ruffy and I look at each other And we think Come on we'll dump Keith So we just, we just score <laughs> just, him off the no, list No, then. no, no We still admit him But what happens is You know that guy that you just actually leave <laughs> And let him go about his business <laughs> And dancing. we get away from him You wouldn't him as a roommate I don't think No, no, no. Again, Kind of strangest yeah. roommate I ever had I just remembered uh -huh. that mm -hmm. um, Jim Bowen Oh, oh, Jim Bowen Bullseye? of Bullseye yeah. fame. Ah, you Aye. just remind me. I'll, t I'll tell you the circumstances. Jim had come up to do our old telly show offside. Murdo had done it. Ruffy's done it. And uh, it was a Monday night. And uh, by the time we did that kind of as live, only maybe an hour to spare for them to get it on the telly at half ten. So the norm was that anybody coming up from England or whatever uh, would stay overnight. And Jim Bowen was one such guest. And um, when he came on the show, you didn't know. You, you always gave the guests a wee idea of what you were going to talk about, so they could think of a couple of stories. You know, with a says to Murdo, right, Germany will definitely come up. Murdo, we might even ask you to speak a wee bit of German. So if you're right, I cheers, Tom. Right, so I know taking cold um, on in the studio. You know, so the one thing that we kept back though for Jim Bowen that I knew about him anyhow is that he is an excellent that he was. Poor man's no longer base. He was an excellent jazz trumpeter, right? So what we did for on the show by way of a surprise, we're sitting here doing the programme, chat, 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 bullseye, Tony Green, one or more with six starts, and then out of the blue, I says, Jim, something else that we'd, we'd know about you, and I whipped out from behind the couch a trumpet that we'd go for props that day. Yeah. Jim, we believe you're a very good trumpet player, you know? And he looked at me a wee bit crestfallen, and he says, Tam, Tam, I would, uh, I would love to, but I can't, I can't. I says, what do you mean you can't? And he says, uh, I'm a very good trumpeter. I've been playing for years and years. I've played in various bands, but I can't just play the trumpet like that. You need to warm up the instrument. I would need to warm up my mouth as well. You can't just play it. I wouldn't get a tune out of it. And I thought, well, so I says, right, so I got a wee shout for the director. Right, fine, we'll just cut that bit out, that's yeah. fine, you know. And we moved on the rest of the show. So, because he'd come up for England, staying overnight, we're at the old BBC at Queen Margaret Drive next to Botanic Gardens. The guests were normally put up in the Hilton Grosvenor Hotel, just across the road there, yeah. you know. So, after we did a wee drink in the green room and stuff like that, we goes over to the hotel, Jim's going, oh, boys, he's going for a drink. Yeah, we'll come here. So we were sitting there uh, in the wee lounge bit, in the uh, Hilton Grosvenor, it's a Monday night, so it was quite quiet. Jim at one point says, uh, Can you just excuse me, guys? And he went away, toilet or whatever, you know. But he wasn't at the toilet, he'd gone up to his room and he brought down his own trumpet. And to the very small but select crowd that was there, folk that had worked on the show and that, Jim Bowen, we get an audience with a top jazz trumpeter. He brought out his trumpet and he's playing away, playing away. We are, we are I think this is amazing. The drink keeps on flowing. Gets to that time, I think, God, I'm meant to be getting uh, him. He says, I'm going to just see if there's a, a room and I'll stay overnight as well. There wasn't any rooms available. And Jim says, hey, you should see the room they've given me. You, you know, he's the star, you know. Yeah. He said, just come on, you can kip with me, you know. And I thought, I'm leaving from kipping in the flare. Uh, of the host of Bullseye, <laughs> you know it's always a it's always a story to tell for can be many years later. You know, I who's <laughs> <laughs> that? But uh, <laughs> in one, but the uh, <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, uh, he, so I ended up up in his room. It was he'd give him a suite, and it had like a, it was like almost like two separate rooms, and uh, so I effectively. I joked in one of them, and I was a roommate of the late great Jim Bone. Yeah, and that's roommate. the and that's the headline for the roommate, podcast, Ruffy. Yeah. I right. slept with Jim Bone. Right. <laughs> Did you ever get put in with the same roommate when you go away? Because when you used to go away, they used to put <laughs> bad guy, good guy together. 
think, <laughs> I think the good guy would <laughs> do something with it. The other yeah. one, Stop yeah, my best drinking. one was Ian Andrews. Ian Andrews would just oh. know that, yeah. know that story. Uh, there was another one. It, it was so easy to wind up, Tom. Honestly, it was a nervous wreck. Just for the benefit, Ruffy, before you tell the story, uh, for the benefit. No, let's go that one. No, it's no, no. I'm not, I'd not like to hear that one. No, I'm going to let you hear this one, no. but for the benefit of anyone who's under a certain age, Ian Andrews was a guy who was signed by Celtic. When Pat Bonner was Pat Bonner was injured. injured. He came, I think, from Leicester City and he was... <laughs> <laughs> murder. He was murder, rough he was. He was too nervous. He was yeah. just one of these. Which is guys not a good could, quality could, for a goalkeeper, handle, is it? He yeah. just couldn't handle the big crowds and everything. <laughs> um, we used to go away, we away in a pre season thing, and uh, Big Billy gave us a night off. And uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but the old football, it's an ancient, you know, thing where. You go into a room and you turn all the lights off. No, you screw all the lights. So when you go in the night out and you get bevied, whoever comes back into the room, they don't know whether they try to get the lights on and everything. But the added bit of that is what you do is you put cling foil in the toilet seat. You put cling foil in the toilet because they can't see so. I wish I was too so old again. So, 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 so we go by the so so before, so before we go up I said, I'll see you in a minute, I'll see you doing the stairs. So I've taken all the lights out of the toilet, I've put the cling film on the seat. So we come back for the night out and we come into the room and he's, he's going I think I've eaten something. <laughs> I need to get in the toilet. So he goes, and I'm sitting in the bed, and he goes in the toilet, and he's trying to get the lights on. Of course, there's no lights coming on at all. So then he goes, I can't get the lights on. He says, it's the next one, he sits in the toilet, and they cling from. And he goes, oh, what's happening? <laughs> Where's the toilet paper? There's no toilet oh. paper. He oh. came out of the thing and it's all stuck to his ass. Obviously, oh, that's 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 the oh, oh, so. you, you couldn't even get a clean shit that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, dear. Anyway, oh, by the way, I'll just finish with telling you, Charlie Nicholas. Hi. Uh, if I was... If I was dating somebody, if I was a wee boy, boy, Charlie was, Charlie was great. Well, he was cool as ice, wasn't he? Right away, was champagne, Charlie. Ah, do you know what I mean? So, but by the way, he wore him. leather trousers, no socks. Ah, he was uh-huh. cool as ice, and he had the hair that he could have easily fit in an eighties band rock. Yeah. Uh, right. Throw in a stud oh, earring, huh? and you've got him as he is now. <laughs> 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 no, he was it, cool, wasn't he? he was oh, good, he was. Was and, he, and he loved all the same music, and he went to the same bars. I mean, I used to, three or four of us just used to. We would try and get any Maxwell plums, you know, on the River Clyde. Uh huh. We yeah. used to try and get in there because we he he would get in there or he he got to Cafe Cini in, in Renfield Street and we just wanted Is that to, his place. That was point, his place yeah. at uh-huh. one point. But but Maxwell Plums in the early days or the Cotton Club, he just wanted to be seen Charlie's somewhere Charlie where Parker's he was there. or something. Charlie Parker's uh-huh. another one. Uh-huh. You just wanted to be where he was. You know, he was cool as uh-huh. Charlie. Aye. Uh-huh. Well, well, he had Paul McStay was with him as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You get people like Paul, but Paul was. The opposite side. Yeah. Paul was always kind of quiet and uh, in the corner. Charlie and, wasn't he? And Charlie was <laughs> Charlie. As you're saying the, the the leather trousers uh, on and cool looking. And do you know what I remember, Murdo? Is Danny McGrain tells a great story about Charlie. Charlie, the boy, the boy comes up to him, and I think it was in a Hamilton nightclub. And the boy is clearly plays professional football at a lower level, mm-hmm. and he's absolutely miffed because Charlie's in a nightclub. The girls are all around him. He's a good looking guy. His partner's I thought Charlie's partner was magnificent uh-huh. as well. So they've you know, he's eventually get scunnered because he's seen Charlie, he's the, the darling of the football world. And the, the guy for the lower league walks up to Charlie and he went, See you? He says, You, you're the top footballer in Scotland, you think? I can do it and you can do. And Charlie says, is that right? And Charlie pulled out a 20 quid and ripped it up into 10 pieces. <laughs> and says, can you do that, right? So the wee guy walks away. And Danny said, Charlie absolutely done him in right there. And then he says, but he quickly get the 20 quid and then sit taped it back together. Because <laughs> he wasn't that rich. But he could do you in with a one-liner. Charlie, oh. he was good. He was great in the dressing room. You know, for a young boy to come through. And to, mind you, we were all fa- fairly young. We'd be, what, twenty. 
three, maybe yeah, he's twenty two when yeah. Charlie was coming through. He ran Motherwell ragged. I mean, we just came up. I remember that for the yeah. first division. He's beat a seven one at yeah. uh, Fir Park, and and Charlie Nicholas was three, magnificent. Right. Joe Watt, poor old Joe. I can still see old Joe with the teeth out and all that, <laughs> just looking like an old man <laughs> sliding in for tackles miles away for Charlie, and he's just ripping us apart. He was oh, he was sensational. Yeah, and that one that he got for Scotland, that's still it's still one of my all time favourite goals to be where he, he need it. And then volleyed oh, it. Oh, against it with Switzerland. The right. Aye, Aye. volleyed that, it with the left. What a Absolute goal. peach. Yeah. I can't let you go, Murdo, um, because you're a special guest. Without talking about a game that that I think uh, possibly a lot of Celtic fans uh, remember you for, because it, it became synonymous with ten men won the league. Yeah. You guys had the chance to win the league with a, a, a. It was everything to play for Celtic against Rangers in 1979. I mean, it, yeah. it must be the highlight of your Celtic career. It is um, first year at Celtic. And you're thinking you go to Celtic. It's strange though, Peter. It's only o- over the last maybe year or so that I realised about the the run that that whole season. That I think it, there was twelve weeks where we didn't play a game of football. That's right. It was something ridiculous. It was an unbelievable backlog. There was the Murren fan saying, "What's what's up with that?" <laughs> 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 but uh, going to Celtic and then going down to obviously the last game of the season. Playing against Rangers, your big rivals, desperate to beat them. They just needed a draw to win the, the league that oh. year, so we had to beat them. And then we're down to ten men, and uh, Johnny Doyle gets sent. Johnny off. Doyle gets sent off. Yeah. We man was great the whole season, and then and possibly the best part is the the whole season was just us winning that night because yeah. he said if we hadn't we hadn't won that night, he'd have taken all the blame and all this kind of thing. So, yeah. but we all went out, we battled away, managed to get a goal the last minute. 25 yarder top corner and you didn't mean it though I mean you, you were <laughs> well, two minutes to go I, d- you I, did, I didn't mean it yeah but I said to myself I'm going to hit this as hard as I can if I miss the target I'll go up the Celtic end the boys will keep the ball and the referee will blow the whistle and I banged it and Big Peter I don't think he moved it just went top right hand corner and you know when you're, you're 20 years of age and you've just scored a goal that wins mm. help helped us win the league it was just because I always remember doing a Q&A with uh, Colin Jackson yeah the Rangers centre half right he scored one goal alright the third goal and he said and somebody I asked him what was your your favourite goal and he says oh Murdo's in the 4-2 game and I'm I'm sitting there all tough <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great That's he right. says well if he had near scored I'd get the blame for winning Celtic the league Ah, ah yeah, right, Colin right, is a lovely right. man. Fantastic, he's a, really he's nice a lovely, person. He's an absolute gentleman. Really nice. It's a it's a great story to finish with. We've had, <laughs> we've had uh, more than a few tales. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Um, the podcasts every week uh, will have special guests on Ruffy, Tam, and myself. Uh, and if you get a chance, you can watch it on our YouTube channel as well. You can subscribe. You'll get all the latest video content as well as clicking on the shop. You can get yourself one of our t-shirts, canvas and our Legends Prince 2. We're going to give Murdo one. We'll get a photograph with him uh, with the, the T-shirt on, uh, and you can get one yourself uh, from Ruffy, from Tam Cowan, from myself, Peter Martin. A big thank you to Murdo McLeod for being our guest. Thank you very much for listening to this week's PLZ Football Podcast. <laughs>